Hello, my name is Adam and I'm pre-sales consultant at Stormit. Stormit as an AWS advanced partner can help you make the most of what AWS cloud has to offer. Maintaining the availability of your web application is crucial to ensure seamless user experiences. CloudFront, Amazon Web Services Content Delivery Network, offers a powerful feature known as Origin Failover, which enhances your application's availability. In this video, we will explore what CloudFront Origin Failover is, how it works, and the steps to set it up in AWS Management Console. So let's dive in. CloudFront allows you to specify two types of origins for your content, primary and secondary. This is a special function in origin groups. We will see that later in the AWS Management Console. The primary origin is where CloudFront fetches content by default. The secondary origin serves as a backup, ready to take over in case the primary origin experiences issues. You can select failover criteria using the most well-known 400 or 500 error codes. A similar function is also offered by a route 53 uh, failover routing. Uh, we actually have a video about it, so if you are interested in learning more, you can watch this video. And how does this all work if you set it up? CloudFront only on a cache miss sends a request to the origin one, which is our primary origin. And if primary origins responds with error status code, like 404, for example, CloudFront then waits for some time and tries to get the file from the primary origin again. But this can be changed. I will show this later in my demo. So normally it would take some time till this will happen, these next steps. And the next steps are that uh, CloudFront tries the same request with secondary origin. And secondary origin responds with 200 OK status and sends a requested file. At the moment you are not able to select more than one primary origin and one secondary origin. In our demo, we will explore testing and simulating failover with two EC2 instances. However, these same steps can be applied to any type of origin, including non-AWS. So let's go to the AWS Management Console. So we are in the AWS Management Console and we will start by going to EC2. And I will show you that I already have two instances. One is named primary and one is named secondary. Uh, I, I have also used a different instance type because it's possible with CloudFront origin failover. Uh, you can have one primary instance that will be, for example, T2 medium and one secondary that will be T2 micro. T2 micro, I think it costs less than ALB for in instance. So you can have high availability without ALB. We are doing this, uh, but normally only the first instance will be used and the second will not get any traffic. So it's different than using application load balancer and I will go now to uh, CloudFront and I uh, already have a CloudFront distribution that I'm also using with my domain name. I can try to hit this domain name and as you can see I will get a simple WordPress website. It's just a simple uh, thing. It uh, doesn't really matter in this case and I can close this window and I will go to the uh, CloudFront distribution. And what I will need to do first is go to origins. And as you can see, we have only one origin, which is primary EC2. And here is the origin domain name. I can also try to hit the domain name. And as you can see, it's showing like this. And what I want to do now is to uh, create a new origin. So I will create a new origin 
but I will need first the domain name of the secondary instance. So I will go to EC2 and find, find my secondary instance. And here is a public DNS domain. And I will go back to CloudFront and copy it here. And yes, we want to connect to this EC2 instance via HTTP. Uh, it's enough. And yeah, that's basically everything what we need to set up. And um, we have uh, two origins now and we can, and we need to create, create uh, origin group. So click on create origin group and uh, I will select a primary and also the secondary. And as you can see here in brackets, uh, there is written primary. Uh, you can select it like this. It's just that simple. Uh, you are not able to add any other uh, origins at the moment, but uh, even if we had more than one origin, it will not work like this. Uh, I will enter the name, which can be failover, for example, and what I will select, it could be basically everything. It doesn't matter at the moment. But if you want to select only some stuff here, it's possible. As you can see, there is some specific things. So I click on create origin group. And right now uh, it's created. And I will have to go to behaviors tool. Because right now, still the main behavior for the part pattern, which basically means all uh, traffic, uh, goes to this origin. So still a primary EC2 origin only. And I will edit uh, this caching behavior. And I will select here the origin group that we created. And as you can see, I have disabled the caching for this caching behavior. That's because it's much more easier to test this this way, because if we already had uh, something in CloudFront caches, it would not uh, immediately fail over to the second origin. So for, for testing purposes, this is needed, or I would need to clean uh, clean the cages by invalidation and it, it would mean that it would be basically a little bit more difficult to test it out. So that's why I disabled uh, the caging in CloudFront. So let's save changes and it will definitely take some time uh, because CloudFront usually needs to be deployed. As you can see, it is last modified and it's in deploying status. So we will wait for a couple of minutes till it's deployed. And our CloudFront distribution is deployed after a couple of minutes. Uh, so everything should be prepared and functioning. How we will test it? Uh, I actually on the secondary instance, when I click on the public IP, I changed something. Normally this uh, would not be possible. I think that if you have two instances, you would need to have the same things on them. But for testing purposes, I have changed this simple, uh, simple page. So we would know that this is a secondary instance and the first one is primary. So what I will do now is just hit my domain again. And as you can see, here is normal sample page and everything else is normal. And I will go uh, here and I will stop uh, the primary instance. So let's just stop it. Uh, it will take a couple of seconds. So after a couple of seconds, uh, it stopped. Uh, the instance is stopped and I can try to hit the stormy.link and it will probably 
take a lot of time and it's because we have some timeouts and other stuff in CloudFront. I will show you how, how it can be changed, but uh, this is also one thing that you should know. If you are using the failover in CloudFront, it will always take some time till it really tries to hit the secondary instance, but it can be changed and it yeah, as you can see, it's uh, it's called uh, to the secondary after a couple of seconds, but this is not useful because if I try to go, for example, to some page, it will again try to first go to the first origin, try to hit it with uh, the request. And I can go to CloudFront now and to actual CloudFront and to origins. And we will need to change something in the first origin, which is the primary origin. And I will edit it and go down and click on additional settings. And here are some connection items, connection timeout and response timeout. Uh, I think at the moment it's best to just give one where it's possible and try to save it. Uh, keep alive doesn't have to be changed because this is something what uh, doesn't matter at the moment. But I will click on save changes now and go back uh, to distributions. And it will need to be propagated again, so I will wait and we will start after the deployment. Our change is deployed after a couple of minutes and I can go to my domain again and try to hit it again. And as you can see, it works and we are on the secondary origin. I can go back and start the instance again, but uh, it will take some time till it's propagated and other stuff. So this, this is how origin failover works in CloudFront. You have to set timeouts for origin so it, it will work as you would normally want it to, but sometimes it doesn't uh, matter. Uh, because if you would have some, something else than me, then just this high availability solution for two instances, it can be useful for you. So, uh, let's go back to my presentation and, and this video. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos about AWS services, subscribe to our channel. Or if you want to learn more about other services, visit our website and blog. Links are in the description below. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us.